Hello everyone, this is Noble H. Mustak, and today we are here with another main association of athletes problem from Meet 3, December 2012. Round 1, Probability, Problem 3. In the game of Yahtzee, one has a chance to get Yahtzee, five of the same kind, and throw five dice. One has three chances to produce the five of a kind by throwing the dice three times, picking up all or some for the next throw. Denton threw two fives in his first throw and left those. He picks up the other three dice and proceeds. What is the probability that he gets a Yahtzee of fives? Okay, so that's a lot of information, but basically... Uh, actually, I'll explain the problem later, but what I do want to explain first is that this is a very complicated problem with a very complicated answer. But it has a rather simple solution, more simple than you would think. So, what, what my math club did this problem, we did this problem for about 15 minutes, and then we kept getting the wrong answer because we had such a complicated solution, like a really co complicated solution, which I'll explain to you later. And then... We we almost gave up on that problem. We almost gave up, and whatever. And then we found this really simple solution. And then we have solved the problem within like five minutes using that solution. So I'm going to show you the simple solution. But first, I'm going to explain what this problem even is even asking. To get out to fives, we need all the dice to be fives. We already have two fives, so we need to get the remaining three dice to also be fives. Denton has already used his first chance, so we have two chances for all three dice to be to have a five by the end. So. Based off Alex's explanation that our teacher gave us, okay, we kept thinking, okay, so what are the different ways that this can happen in? One way that this can happen is that we get no fives. And then we have to throw them all again, and then we have to get three fives. We, or we could get one five, and then we need to throw two more, and then we get two fives on the third throw. Or we get two fives, and then we only need to throw one more die to get a five, and then, yeah. Or on the second throw, we get all three fives, and then there's no third throw. Okay, so that's four different cases, and they're pretty complicated cases. And I'm pretty sure that's the correct way of thinking about this. That's that, Those are all of the cases. So if you do that out, and then you use a calculator, you should get the right answer. However, no calculators. So we kept getting the wrong answer, because we kept make, making mistakes with our arithmetic. So... We didn't get the right answer. Also, we only have 12 minutes, so unless you have some kind of arithmetic shortcut, which if you do, please tell me in the comments. There's probably an arithmetic shortcut to do this way within 12 minutes or within 5 minutes or whatever. But I don't want to do that. I don't want to go through 5 cases. So instead, I'm going to examine each die individually. So instead of thinking, okay, we have 3 die, we throw them, and then we pick up some die, and then we... No. You look at each die, and you throw it. On the second throw, there's a one-sixth probability of getting a five. Okay? However, there's five-sixths probability that we don't get a five. In that case, we pick up that die, and then we throw it again. And then that's one-sixth probability. So we have a condition of five-sixths of us failing on the second throw, and then a probability of one-sixth of getting a five. So we multiply the condition by the probability to get five-thirty-sixths. So there's two cases. One, we get it right on the first try, or two, we get it wrong on the first try, and then you get it on the second try. So that's what I'm doing here. That's the basic logic. It's very simple logic. And then we to get, we add those two cases together. One-sixth plus five-sixth is eleven-thirty-sixths. That's the probability of one die getting a five by the end. Okay, so that's it. That We, we only have two cases instead of four cases. And they're very simple cases instead of four very complicated cases. And how, well, this, these complicated cases are probably going to get us a complicated answer. So, why did we only get 11 to sixth? It's because we have three die. So we need to cube the probability. And this is where it gets complicated. There's no way you can avoid this. You need to cube 11 and you need to cube 36. Personally, I have 11 cubed memorized. So I knew that 11 cubed was 1331. I also have 36 squared memorized because that's 6 to the 4th. So 6 to the 4th is 1296. I have that memorized. And then I need to do 1296 by 36. The way I did that is that I did 1296 by 6, which is 7776. And then I did by 6 again, which is 46656. So the correct answer is 1331 all over 46,656. There is no way getting around that answer. That is the correct answer. 
So, it's still a very simple solution. All you need to do is cube a small fraction. And you have two cases, so there's a bit of logic. But all you need to do is cube a small fraction. In this case, you need to do a lot of arithmetic. Like, a lot. And we kept making mistakes, even though we should have gotten the correct answer. So, yeah, that's this is just an example of a problem. Well, this is a very complicated solution, and this is really the obvious solution. However, it's a very hard solution to do out. So instead, we have a little trick to make it much simpler. In, to make it as simple as just cubing one simple fraction. And yeah, that's it for this problem. But it, there, I didn't want to show you another problem, because I don't think Mammal has these many tricks to problems. But it, last week, I did go to a national math competition called OIMO, which is the competition you qualify for if you do really good at Mammal. So I wanted to show you one of the problems on OIMO. Oh, okay. So this is the problem I was talking about. Find the largest prime factor of 13 to the 4th plus 16 to the 5th minus 172 squared. You do not have a calculator on this math competition. You are given that as the product of three distinct primes. So if you find two other primes, that means that your last one must be um, the other prime. So one way you, you could do this is that you just keep dividing primes. Eventually you get 13. Okay, first of all, you do this out. So I'm not going to do it out. This. So it, you get that answer, and then you divide primes 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13 works. Uh, 7, blah, 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 primes, 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 61 works. That's your answer. There's no way you're going to do that in 12, 10 minutes, unless you're really fast. So what these people did, they said, okay, so this is 2 to the 20th minus 2 to the 10th plus 1. I'm not going to show you how they did that. They did some difference of squares probability, so it's, again, another small trick. And then this is the really big trick. They, they did this weird thing, and then they used something called the Sophie Germain identity. I don't know what this is, but they did this within three sentences. They did this really hard problem that took so much boot force within three sentences. Another, um, no, this is the same solution. Apparently, there's something called Legendre's identity. I don't know what this stuff is. Another really simple solution. This is like five sentences. So they did 2 to the 20th minus 2 to the 10th plus 1. And then they did a difference of perfect squares to factor polynomial. And then they found that the largest factor was 1,321. Again, a very simple solution. within That you can do within 12, 10 minutes without having to do a bunch of arithmetic where you'll make mistakes. So yeah, I'm not going to go through the solution of this problem because I don't really understand it. but. These people did a very hard problem. Six people in the country got this within 10 minutes, so these pro people probably got this after the competition was ended. But it's a very simple problem, it seems, that you can do with in 10 minutes. And even though it's pi basically prime factorizing a number that's on the order of 1 million. So yeah, I just really like this problem because it's, it's a very small trick to it. And there are a bunch of trickster problems at OMO, so I just wanted to talk about trickster math problems that are very complicated, with very complicated answers, but have very small solutions. So yeah, and that's it for this math problem. Think simple, think simple, and have fun doing math!